Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to my reading journey. Hope you're all doing fine and today we're starting a new story. It's The Guardian of Ackledale. You ready? Go. Not the last important of the force of the Weymouth Weymouth Bank was Uncle Bushard, Bushrod. Sixty years had Uncle Bushard given for faithful service to the house of Weymouth as chattel, chattel, servitor, servitor, and friend. Of the color of the Mahogany, Mahogany Bank, Mahogany Bank furniture was Uncle Bushrod. Thus dark was he externally. Thus dark was he externally. White as the unlinked pages of the bank ledgers was his soul. Eminently, eminently pleasing to Uncle Bushrod would the compassion have been for to him the only institution in extent existing worth worth considering was the Weymouth Bank of which he was something between Porter and Gen Generalissima in church Generalissima Weymouth will lay dreamy and umbergeous umbergeous among the low foot foothills foothills along the brow of southern valley three banks there were in women's will two were hopeless misguided enterprises prices enterprises lacking of presence and prestige of the mer way move to give them glory the third was the bank managed managed by the way the uncle bush road in the old way women Hampstead, the red brick white portico called white portico mansion the first to your right as you crossed Elder Creek, coming into town, lived Mr. Robert Weymouth, the president of the bank. His widow daughter, Mrs. Wazy, called Miss Letty by everyone, and her two children, Nan and Guy. There are also in the cottage on the grounds raised Uncle Bunshard and Aunt Ma Ma Malindy, Malindy, his wife. Mr. William Weymouth, the cashier of the bank, lived in the modern fine house on the principal avenue. Mr. Robert was a large, stout man, 62 years of age, with a smooth, plumpy, plump face, plump, plump. Long iron gray hair and fiery blue eyes. He was high tempered, kind and generous, with a youthful smile and a formidable stern voice that didn't always that didn't always mean what it sounded like. Mr Mr William was in a my mild sounded like sorry. Period. Mr. William was a milder, mild, milder man, correct, in deportment and absorbed in business. The Weymouth, Weymouth formed the family of Weymouthville and were looked up to, as was their right of heritage. Uncle Bushard was the bank's trusted porter, messenger. 
Wassel and Garden, he carried the key to the world, world, just as Mr. Robert and Mr. Williams, William did. Sometimes there was ten, fifteen, or twenty thousand dollars in sack silver stacked on the wall floor. It was safe with Uncle Busher. He was a Weymouth in heart, honest, honestly, and pride. Of late, Uncle Bushard hadn't been wi without worry. It was on account of Marce Robert. For nearly a year, Mr. Robert had been known to indulge in too much drink, not enough understand to become tipsy, but the habit was getting a hold upon him, and everyone was beginning to notice it. Half a dozen times a day he would leave the bank and step around to the merchants and planters hotel to take a drink. Mr. Roberts usual king judgment and business capacity became a little impaired impaired. Mr. Williams a way mouth but not so rich in expensive in experience tried to damn the in inevitable backflow of the, of the tide, but with incomplete success. The deposits in the Weymouth Bank dropped from six figures to five. Past due paper began to accumulate, owning to injudicious loans. No one cared to address Mr. Robert on the subject of temperance. Temperance. Many of his friends said that the cause of it had been the death of his wife some two years, some two years before. Others hesitated on account of Mr. Robert's quick, quick temper which was extremely apt to re recent personal interference of such a nature. Miss Lady and the children noticed that the change and grieved, grieved about it. Uncle Bushard also worried, but he was was one of those who would not have dared. dared to remonstrate, 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 although he and Marsh Robert had been raised among almost as companions, but there was a heavier shock coming to Uncle Bashard than that caused by the bank president's daughters, daughters, and juleps. Mr. Robert had a passion of fishing, which he usually indulged whenever the season and business permitted. One day, when reports had been coming in relating to the bass and perch, he announced his intention of making a two or three days visit to the lakes. He was going down, he said, to Reedy, Reedy Lake with George Archinard, of all, an old friend. Now Uncle Bushard was treasurer of the sons and daughters of the burning bush. bush. Every occasion, Sorry, not occasion. Every association <laughs> had belonged belonged to made him treasurer without hesitation. He stood a a high in colored circles. He was understood among them to be Mister Mister Bashard, 
Weymouth of the Weymouth Bank. The night following the day of which Mr. Robert mentioned his intended fishing trip, the old man woke up and rose from his bed at 12 o'clock, declaring he must go down to the bank and fetch the passbook of the sons and daughters, which he had forgotten to bring home. The bookkeeper had balanced it for him that day, put the cancelled checks in it, and snapped two elastic bands around it. He put but one band around other pass box. He put but one band around other pass box. All right. Thank you guys for joining me today. This story gonna be interesting, right? It's gonna consist of. It's not gonna consist of many parts, but yeah. See you tomorrow on the second part. Thank you for joining. Bye.